Hey, what's going on guys? Thomas Doherty here with GoTime Success Group. So yesterday we focused most of our time on the consistency of the process, executing with excellence. But you know, based on a few conversations I've had over the past week, I thought it would be a good time to kind of shift gears a bit. As an industry, whether it's HVAC, plumbing, electrical, uh, roofing, siding, windows, garage doors, it doesn't really matter, the service industry in general, I see as a coach and a trainer that we spend most of our time focused on two key ingredients to success. Action, what are the actions? So that's the system, the process, the execution. What's the action and what's the results? As a matter of, as a matter of fact, from a coaching perspective, from a training perspective, and I'm sure there are a lot of coaches and trainers out there that are listening to this as well, we spend probably 90, 95% of our time talking about action and results. I mean, it's a part of our mantra, right? Take massive action, and it's really critical that we do that. Take massive action that produces extraordinary results. I'm shifting gears just a little bit today because I believe that that formula of 95% of our time being dedicated to action and results and only about 5% of our time being tied to the people and their belief system is a bit flawed. Why? Because if someone has the wrong belief system and attitude, what types of actions and results do we tend to see? You know, business owners, leaders, managers out in the field, you know what the outcome looks like when we've got the wrong belief system and attitude. So as owners, as leaders, as managers, how do we shape that? First and foremost, I believe that it starts by understanding who we are. What, what's our vision? What's our mission? What's our culture here at our company? And then what we do is we try to attract people that will fit that mission, that vision, and that culture. And it starts so often by looking at actions and results and where it needs to start is by looking at their belief system and their attitude how do we do that well hire better is a great way to do it hiring better having a better process for hiring better candidates better people that we add to our team one of the most recent books that i read was titled who and it talked all about recruiting people and one of the things he talked about was number one you can't make more time, you can't get it back, so prioritize your time. Why are you bringing someone in to do a live, in-person interview when you haven't even had a phone call with them yet, right? Why are you bringing them in and spending 30, 45 minutes to an hour with someone that you should not even be interviewing, possibly, question mark, right? So he says, do a phone interview first. Make it 10 to 15 minutes, and you want to accomplish two things. Do I even like this person? That's a good one, because if I don't like them in 15 minutes, I mean, this is the honeymoon, right? If I don't like them in the first 15 minutes, what are the chances I'm going to want to work with him or her over the next 12 months? So do you even like this person? Then he said, I want you to ask three questions, and I want you to listen for the consistencies. Oh, this is so good. It's starting to attack that belief system. Listen, when I call your previous employer, what would they tell me was your greatest achievement while you were there? When I call your previous employer, what would they tell me was an area in need of improvement? When I call your previous employer, on a scale of one to 10, one being not so likely, 10 being very likely, how likely would they be to rehire you? And he said, man, just sit back and listen for the consistencies in their answers. They may be very positive consistencies. They also may, may be very negative consistencies. And what he shares is that whether it's positive or a negative consistency, at some point that becomes a significant piece of their belief system. Wow, that's powerful. In a 10 to 15 minute conversation, I'm starting to hear this person's belief system. And by the end of this call, it's gotta be a seven out of 10 that this person's going to be a good fit based on what I'm hearing about their belief system attached to our mission, our vision, and who we are as a company. It's got to be a 7 out of 10. Or else why am I bringing this person into interview in person? When I call is the key. Your previous employer, what would they tell me was your greatest achievement? Greatest area in need of improvement? Would they rehire you? Listen 
for the belief system in their consistencies. Then he said, if there are seven out of 10, bring them in in person. Now, when I do an in-person interview, I take a different approach. I tend to focus the beginning of the interview process on their belief system. Because what I have found, folks, let me just ask you, if they have the wrong belief systems and the wrong attitude, what's the chances they're going to do the right thing and drive the right results? Right. Okay. So I'm going to attack the belief system right from the very beginning of an in-person interview. Hey, tell me about the last time you went through any formal training. Maybe it was sales training. Maybe it was technical training. From your training, what did you learn? From what you learned, what did you implement? And from what you implemented, what kind of results did you see? I got your results there at the very end, but what I'm really wanting to know is the belief system. What did you learn? From what you learned, what did you implement, right? And I'm listening for, oh man, I, you know, I've been doing this for, and I really don't need a lot of, or man, I've been through every class, you know, that's been taught and I really just don't need to. I'm listening for, as Zig Ziglar would say, the stinking thinking the stinking belief system. Or I'm listening for, man, I went through this class, I'll never forget. One of the things I really learned in this class was how to actively engage the client. I want them to be as engaged as possible because I want it to become their idea. The way I do that is by asking leading and logical questions, by asking better questions that really help to engage that client. So that by the time I get to my options, I can take all those options and tie them back to what the customer told me. Man, it was an amazing class. I implemented it right away. My close rate's gone up like 20%. I'm listening for, in that in-person interview, their attitude and belief system in regards to training and being coachable and trainable. And listen, if I've got a flawed belief system, I start to, you know, then start to think about, okay, Will this person with this belief system fit our mission, our vision, and our culture? So that interview process can really help in that. Now, after I've done that in-person interview and I feel like the candidate's a 7 out of 10, I'm probably going to implement, which we have in the past, an Intermetrics profile. The beauty of an Intermetrics profile is that it's going to dig deep into internal, external beliefs of your candidate. How do I see myself? How do I believe others see me? Folks, it is an in-depth dive into their belief system. And again, I'm thinking to myself, scale of one to 10, it's gotta be at least a seven or above for the phone interview, for the in-person interview, and with this profile. Now, don't get me wrong, with the profile, with the belief system, Oftentimes, there's going to be some positive and negative in someone's belief system. Just like there is with me, there's positive and negative in that belief structure. So I might have to do a follow-up interview to dive into some of those topics. Maybe it's they've struggled in the past with hitting goals. Maybe they feel reluctant to engage because of previous leadership. I might have to follow up and dig into that belief system just a little bit. Make sure I get some satisfactory answers. So the hiring process is a critical process in regards to determining the belief system of the candidate. Is it a strong, positive belief system or a weak-minded, negative belief system? Because that's going to fuel their attitude, which is going to fuel their action, which is going to fuel their results. Folks, I think too often we hire on skill sets. I can train skill sets. It's very difficult to transform a belief system.